This is by far the craziest book I've ever made. Welcome to Dark Horse Workshop, everybody. Today I'm going to take you through my build of a book I did for Quest Haven. If you love role-playing games, you should totally check out the Quest Haven Kickstarter linked in the description of this video. It's this incredible world and dungeon builder for VR or PC that gives you the tools to bring the often tedious miniature-based parts of your role-playing games to a whole new level. So I found a fairly large pad of paper, 14 by 17 inches, and took two inches off one side of it so that they looked more like the proper size for pages. And now we're just making a bunch of black tea and tea staining all of our pages. Just letting them air dry like this will mean that they're going to get a little weird, which is what we want because we want this kind of crazy big medieval book. So we want the pages to not be all perfectly flat and manufactured. So once we have the pages all dried out, we're going to fold them in half and put them into signatures of six to seven pages. I think I did six here, which may be, in hindsight, a little too many. Now I just say that because the easy way to put the holes into these pages is to saw them and it's just a few too many pages for me to go through easily. You'll see what I mean here. Now I made this makeshift press. I'm gonna leave them in here overnight. And then we're going to check them and then put them back in the press that I'm gonna use as a way to saw them all, which will put holes through all the pages. And of course, the more pages you have in each individual signature, the more sawing you have to do. So when I did this, I didn't saw through all the pages and had to do some makeshift hole punching at the end that you'll see here. So keep that in mind with how many pages you put in each signature. Just a reminder that I have links to all the tools that I use in my videos in the description of my videos, so make sure you have a look at that if that interests you. So after I think I've sawn through all the pages, I check them, and I haven't. So I move one of the pages that is sawn through to the other side and use it as a guide to punch the last of my holes. I like to show my mistakes or things that can be improved in my videos, so this is just something that I did because it didn't work out exactly how I wanted it to. Now that we have holes in all of our pages, it's time to stitch all these individual signatures together into one large block of paper for our book. I made this makeshift jig. It's way more complicated than it needs to be. You just need to be able to string up some twine or leather lace and stitch onto it. So you can put that on a chair between some two by fours, whatever you can figure out will be fine. This is way more complicated than it needs to be. But it's pretty cool, actually. It just kind of... I'm not a woodworker, so I was, very, <laughs> I was very happy with this little jig I made. I had leather lace, so I decided to go with the leather round lace here. I think if I was going to do this again, I would use some kind of twine because it'll give more and the stitching will tighten easier. All you're doing is starting at one end and then going around your lace and back through the hole, around your lace and back through the hole, around your lace and back through the hole, out the other end into the next page up, then back down to the other end, doing the same kind of stitching, and you tie it off. And then you do the next two signatures, and then you do the next two signatures until you run out of signatures. Just be sure that you are snugging down this stitch that you're doing really nicely on your lace or twine or whatever it is you're using, because you don't want them to move. Now when you cut these off, I'm leaving them long because in theory I'm going to use them to attach to the, not the cover, but the in, inner cover portion of the book before you put the actual cover on it. I've seen that done in a lot of videos. And that was my plan here at first, but I decided not to do that in the end, so. So now we're doing the end pages. End pages should be glued on to either end of the book because you don't want to show any stitching and you want it to open up and be seamless. The end pages are the same size as the other pages, and you just glue them on. This is probably the worst glue job you can imagine. It should have been thinned out a lot more, and it should have been... I should have taped it off. I should have done a lot of things, honestly, but live and learn. The glue should have been thinner, smoother, narrower, because once you press the pages together, some of the glue is going to squish around, 
and make for an uneven glue job. Now we're just squishing it down so those pages will dry nicely in place. So a lot of my videos are first time builds. I've done books before but never a book like this and so when we got to this part which is headbanding I got a little nervous and wasn't going to do it. But after some careful consideration I decided to just do it anyways and honestly it was a lot easier than I thought it was going to be. So if you guys are starting a book of this magnitude, I would recommend doing the headbanding just because it looks awesome and you'll be super proud of yourself. So I'm using two different colors of thread and they are knotted together. I'll post a link to a good headbanding resource in the description of this video just because this may get a little crazy. But you go through the first hole where you've stitched your pages together from the center of the book. And then you're looping around that material, like you can see it's looped. And then you're looping around that material again, and moving it over and cinching it down. Then you go around and swap places. And once you swap places, you start to loop again. You do two loops. So here's the loop example. And there's another loop example. Pretty straightforward, right? And then you swap places with the threads. So it goes back thread goes over the front thread and they've swapped places. And now you loop and then you loop again so that you have two loops once more. And then you go back so your thread swaps places and you loop again. And you don't have to stitch down through every single signature. So you just got to pick your spots. So maybe every second signature or maybe the two ends in the middle. Make sure it's tight, swap places, do your double loop, see how I've stitched down through the second signature there, and then you swap places, double loop, swap places, double loop, swap places, double loop, down through the signature, swap places, double loop. I know it sounds like a broken record, but I think you could get easily lost just looking at this. But I'll have a resource down below that is uh, something I looked at when I was doing this, but it's really pretty straightforward. And then once you get to the end, you go down and through your signature and tie it off randomly. Now I say randomly because I really wasn't sure how to tie it off, so I just I just kind of winged it. You're gluing all this down anyways, it should be fine, just tie it off. Now we're going to apply some glue to the back. We're going to apply a couple of coats to seal all the little gaps and let it dry. And then we're going to put a piece of fabric on the back. They sell specific binding fabric for the edges of books. I used some heavier linen that I had lying around. Who knows if that's the right choice, but it turned out in the end. And then we're just going to put some glue on top of this linen after it has been pressed down and dried just to seal it up nicely and make sure it is perfectly down. Snipping my ends of the headband and gluing them a little bit so they have a less chance of slipping. This is also another example of where I might use thick, heavier twine instead for the headbanding just because it'll snug down easier. So I did not like the curvature of the spine and I've seen people hammer their spine to a proper curve so I decided to do this on mine. Turned out okay. Maybe should have done it before I glued the linen, not 100% sure. Something to think about for the future, but it all worked out. Now here is a last minute bookmark that I put in. Using the same glue and just snugging it between the headband and the pages. It was pretty easy. So 
snip it off, torch it a little bit. And now I've got a special treat for you guys. I've been helping out with Quest Haven, so here's a little preview to show you why I'm so excited about it. Pressed on all sides, with the forces of evil closing in, our intrepid adventurers have run out of options. And time. Your only choice? A perilous journey to the dungeon of Coldemont. Roll for initiative. I love how that video turned out. If you're as excited about Quest Haven as I am, be sure to check the link in the description of this video to head on over to Kickstarter and help make the adventure happen. Now, I need to make the Quest Haven logo here, and I've decided to etch it in brass. So I'm going to use a technique called Press and Peel Blue Transfer Paper with an Edinburgh Etch. I use heat to transfer the print onto the metal, and it acts as a resist so I can get all these lovely grooves into my metal. Now, you can tell it's not perfect. I have a new printer at work and it didn't really go great, but the outside edge where all those bubbles are doesn't don't matter because this is all gonna be cut out anyway. I was just worried about the inside portion and it turned out fine. So I'm going to tape this onto some foam, which will enable it to float in my etching solution. Feel free to look up an Edinburgh etch, so you'll know what kind of etch I'm using. I'm heating the water, giving it a little bit of a double boiler style bath in the etchant that I'm dipping it into now. Two seventy five, three hundred degrees, three or four hours, baking soda to neutralize the etch, and then I can pull it off and clean it up so that we can see what we've got going on. Turned out pretty cool, and it also changed some of the brass to a copper look. You can get rid of that with a hydrogen peroxide vinegar kind of bath, but I wanted to keep it just to show the different colors. I thought it was pretty cool. A lot of jeweler saw work here. A little tedious, but got it done. Sanded all the edges, sanded the top. Now it looks great. Now we're going to patina it to darken everything up. This is the most sloppy patina job ever, but bear with me. Just using some brown black Jax patina. It'll darken everything, and then I'll once again sand it to bring out the highlights, and that'll make everything pop a little more. So I had this plan to paint this with enamel. So I am using some metallic enamel that I'm going to paint on, and everything is going to be just beautiful. But a couple issues with this. The first issue was I didn't like how dark this turned out with this enamel. I wanted it a lot brighter. So I'm just taking you guys quickly through my process. So, you know, it's okay to go back and change things multiple times. This was a lot of work just to paint this. Didn't like how dark it was. Wasn't happy with it. And so I decided to redo it in a lighter color. 
So obviously I want the inside cover pieces to be slightly bigger than the pages. And then obviously on top of that, I need the whole cover to be much bigger because I'm folding the leather over and gluing everything down. This pattern will of course be available forever on my website and this month only on my Patreon. If you didn't know about my Patreon, I release new artwork and patterns monthly. So this month on my Patreon, people also get my original simple book pattern, my Viking Gokstad pouch pattern, and my minimalist wallet pattern. On top of that, they also got five pieces of artwork from my Viking art bundle number three. I'll put a link right here for you guys, or you can check out the description of this video for more information. The corners of this pattern still need to be chopped off and some holes punched, but we're ready to cut out our giant cover piece. Now I'm just putting the same lines on the back side of my leather. I want to know where my pages are sitting, where the center point is for my main emblem of the book, and where I'm skiving the edges down in order to fold the cover a little easier. I've centered the emblem, and now I'm just figuring out this knotwork border. I've printed this with a laser printer onto some tracing film, and I'm just going to trace all the lines in before I cut them and bevel them and make them more 3D. So now I'm using the swivel knife. The leather is still wet, but not soaking wet. Just, you know, wet to the core, but not to the touch. If you're cutting your lines on wet leather and they're mushing, it's too wet, you gotta let it dry a bit. So after we get through all of these lines, the next phase is to bevel everything and make it pop out from the leather, which means we're going to do a lot of beveling, I tell you, it's a lot of beveling. But it's really rewarding once it's done. Also, the leather you need to do leather carving properly is vegetable tanned leather, so make sure you have that. So we're beveling around all the edges of every single line. It's a lot of work, but it'll really help the piece pop. We're specifically making sure we even do the little over under bits to make it look like the knotwork is diving under and over the other parts of itself. Once again, I'll have links to the tools that I've used for this leather carving process as well as everything else in the description of this video. Just be patient with it. You may have to wet it a few times or take a break if you're new to leather carving. It really depends on how much carving you need to do. This is a lot of beveling because there's so many over-enders and the lines go all over the place, so it ends up being a fair amount of work. But it's super rewarding when it's done. I use a couple of different beveling tools. I have this wider one to get the majority of the lines. And then when I get into the tight little corners or spots where I'm really trying to have a sharp end to my bevel, because this one is fairly rounded, then I use a much narrower one, especially for sharp curves or tight corners. This one here, I'm getting right into the corner to make it pop a little more. All right, so here we're just using a strap cutter to make a couple of straps for the book. We're going to use a couple of buckles and the straps to help close the book and just give it an all around badass look. I wanted to add a little something else to my straps. So I'm using this rolling stamp tool that's great, especially if you're not very artistic. And as long as you can move it in a straight line, you see I've used a ruler there to set it up and you can get some great results from it. I think you have to buy the other heads separately, but it's a great way to easily fancy up your projects. Bell Skyvers are amazing, but I was having all sorts of trouble trying to thin this down. It might be because of how thin it already was, plus how compressed the leather is, plus how wide of a strip I'm skiving, so you can see it's just smoking away. Probably not good for it, um, but I made it work and got through it all. It's also an older Bell Skyvers, so it 
has a bit of a temper. And trust me, I sharpened the hell out of that thing. So now we're just going to die all of our pieces and then apply a resist. Now the resist is there just like a finish. In fact, they're the same material to allow us to put an antique gel on our leather and it'll help make everything pop a little more. It'll get down into all the cracks and just give it a little more depth. But I'm still going to paint the whole thing. So I've got these Angelus paint markers. They're awesome. I'll link them in the description of this video, obviously. I wasn't too fond with the color. This is my idea that it's going to be gold, but it was drying a little matte. So I do end up going over it with a different gold. But after all is said and done here, we are going to put another finish on this with my dying spray gun to seal everything in. So this is take two of me trying to figure out what to do to make the letters on this emblem pop. I just painted them a lighter gray this time, and then I did a Sharpie in all the grooves to try and make it pop a little more. But honestly, I still didn't like it, so I changed it up yet again. Now I'm just measuring all the spots where I want to punch my holes so I can mount this emblem to the cover of my book. You could drill the holes if you want. I've got this metal punch that's perfect for this 20 gauge brass. I love using these peening rivets. I just don't like the look of leather rivets anymore, so I use them whenever possible. They're a little more tedious, well, a lot more tedious than just hammering a rivet flush instantly, I guess. But I like how they look in the end. Now that that's all done, we're just going to take some wax and burnish up the edges of our straps, make them nice and slick so they look pretty. I'm adding a little Neat's Foot oil, let that dry and set a little bit. Do some end cuts as we prepare to skive. My bench skiver is awesome. You can use a hand skiver if you want, if your leather is too thick. So we can fold it nicely and put a buckle on the end. I wanted the backs to be darker, even though you don't see most of them because they'll be riveted to the cover. But you're gonna see a little bit of the tongue. I wanted to make sure everything was even and dark. We're going to match the book, so we're going to put a resist on, put our antique finish on, and then put a finish on top of that, just to match the color. Now we're making a couple of keepers because we're using heel bar buckles. Center bar buckles are pretty obvious. They've got a bar in the center of the buckle, which means they have their own built-in keeper. Heel bar buckles do not, because they are on one side where the tongue and the strap goes. Now we just need to figure out where our holes go on this strap to mount it to the cover of the book and transfer that information onto both the strap and the cover where we'll punch our holes and mount these straps after we've got the buckles on them. So we're almost to the point where we can put the buckles on the straps. Transfer our hole template onto our cover, punch all those holes. I'm going to use this little stapler that I always use for keepers. I love it. You'll, you probably want to stitch yours. And then we're going to use some more brass peening rivets to mount our buckles to the straps. And then after that, the same size brass peening rivets to get it right onto the cover. Right here, I'm just 
doing some patterning that I should have done earlier, but I wasn't exactly sure which direction I was going to take. So we're just getting rid of a little bit of the end here, so everything sits a little nicer, a little more flush. Now we're just cutting out our inside cover pieces. They'll be a little bit bigger than our pages. You could do this in a very, very thin wood, or this bookbinding cardstock that I have. I decided to use contact cement. I should have just used the same white glue all the way through, but I was being I was being a little rushy. I didn't need to be. And really, this didn't speed things up that much. And it's gross and stinky. I try and avoid contact cement at all costs. more patterning on the fly. You got to cut these 45s off the corners. I would have left a little more corner just so it can fold a little nicer. You can always trim some away later. So if you're doing this, just think about having a couple millimeters more leather there on that corner. Now we're just putting the glue we should have used all along onto here, folding everything over and clamping it down in order for it to dry. Once we've done both of those sides, well, we've got our cover ready to go. And now we just need to figure out how we're gonna glue all those pages into the main cover of our book and have everything sit perfectly. This is also where I bring my straps over, figure out where I'm gonna punch the holes and cut the straps to size based on the thickness of the pages and where everything sits. Here's also where I cut those pieces off. I realize I'm not going to use them at all to mount to the inside cover sections, so we're moving on to just gluing everything into this cover. Spoiler alert, this does not go well. I found gluing the end pages and the spine down at the same time to be a travesty of errors, and what ends up happening is the spine never glues down properly, so the pages are never seated in the right position, Everything glues awkwardly, and I end up just saying screw it and ripping the end pages out of the book and redoing them because I lose my mind. You don't see that because I didn't record it, but uh, I lost my mind a little bit. Now I'm just going to glue the cover to the spine. That's my plan. Once I have the spine glued, I can easily glue the end pages in without worry. It's just the spine that was causing most of my frustration because it would shift and move depending on if the book was open or closed. And it just was really tough. So I burnish everything in place, make sure everything is nicely put down. I leave some heavy stuff on top of it in this position overnight and come back the next day and it is ready for the next step. Now the next step for me was instantly wanting to redo all of the gold. The stuff I had before had this weird yellow-green look to it that was driving me crazy. If you ever think something may look pretty cool, you're probably right. Just go with it. Go with your gut. I was humming and hawing over redoing this or not. And the much more metallic, much more gold look matched everything a lot nicer, so I was very happy. I gotta clean up these insides for my new end pages, but on top of that, I decide to change the lettering yet again. This time I'm just getting rid of the gray. I'm keeping it all metallic. The gray was rubbing off a bit, and on close inspection, it was very much, you could tell it was paint. So I just decide to play around with this and make it all metallic. It blends a little bit, you know, the copper on the copper, but it still looks awesome. And I still definitely prefer this much more realistic metallic look to the paint that I had done. Here we are doing our new end pages with 
better glue job using some paper to make sure I have a nice line and thinning the glue a bit more so it spreads nicely or almost nicely. Once these pages are re-glued to the main signatures, we're going to then glue everything to the ends of our cover. Now, I still think I could have done a better job with the end pages since they were a little rough, but that will take some practice. I honestly don't really use this glue very much. It just went on thicker than I wanted it to, and I had already screwed it up, so it was a little weird. But it did turn out. For my first book like this, I'm quite happy with it, honestly. Very happy with it. Glue everything together, smooth it down, do the other side, and then close it and hope for the best. It was pretty good, but not perfect. Now we are doing corners. This is fancy stuff right here. They're not overly complicated. It might be scary at first. I think this is 20 gauge brass. It might be 18. Oh, there it is. It says right there, 20. So it's 20 gauge brass. I'll put these little corners in my pattern as well, but they're not very complicated. You just need to cut them out and bend them over something of the appropriate size and then flatten them out. I had a few different ideas of how I was going to do this. I've done corners once before. Couldn't for the life of me remember how I did it, but a little bit of jeweler saw work and then a little bit of hammer work over a random piece of metal I found in the shop that I think was Levi's from Drawbridge Props. Thanks Levi for leaving that here. You may want to collect it. And after I've sanded it, I'll uh, hammer it over that metal. Just keep banging away at it until everything forms up properly. And then I'm going to glue it onto the corners of my cover with the same white glue that I was using before. I'm going to friction fit it by hammering it down. And then I'm going to do some little dents in the back of it to hopefully help it stay a little better. I have no idea if they will at all, but I figured I would give it a try. Hammer down some little decorative dents, give it a couple taps, and we're done. coming along with me on this build everybody i'm always trying to build new things and i learned a ton during this process make sure you check the description of this video for links to quest haven as well as my website where you can pick up patterns artwork both historical and historically inspired t-shirts all sorts of stuff and until next time keep on being creative in whatever it is you do